On February 1st, the Animal Legal Defense Fund filed a formal complaint with the USDA regarding the exploitation of animals on social media. The Animal Legal Defense Fund claims that pet tubers such as, but not limited to, Cat Alia, Jacob Fetter, Rico Exotic, and Taylor Nicole Dean need to receive AWA licenses and comply with the minimum standards outlined regarding animal welfare due to criticisms they lay out in the complaint. And I'm gonna be honest, this is probably the new problem with pet tube that could lead to possibly a massive change for the platform itself. And for some reason, nobody's been talking about this. So today, let's talk about everything that the Animal Defense Legal Fund's complaint entails, as well as how this really isn't a bad thing, it just has a massive catch to it. And all the ways this can all play out and how this may determine the fate of pet tube and animal content creators as a whole online. A short little disclaimer, um, I'm not a lawyer. I'm simply a poli-sci and history major who had time on their hands and wanted to discuss this complaint after spending over a month researching it. So while I have a grasp on what I'm talking about, uh, please don't use this as like advice on the matter because this is just research and opinions based on said research about a honestly rather tricky act. Uh, another side note, I recorded this pretty late at night and after a very long day, so I do butcher Animal Legal Defense Fund and call them Animal Defense Legal Fund amongst other things. Please forgive me, it was a very long day. They are called the Animal Legal Defense Fund. Just ignore every time I butcher it. Okay, cool. But if you do take this as advice, please send me a crisp 400k. Thanks, on with the video. First things first, let's get into the Animal Defense Legal Fund's complaint and talk about everything that it entails because it talks about a lot and you kind of need to understand what it's saying in order to proceed with this video. The gist of it is that they're asking the Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service and the USDA to prohibit influencers on any form of social media from exhibiting animals unless or until they get an AWA license, as well as follow the minimum standards outlined in the law for animal welfare standards. The reason they're doing this is because of the previously listed social media influencers basically exhibiting their animals to millions of people for profit without having any oversight from the APHIS. According to the Animal Defense legal fund, the reason they're making this complaint is because this would force pet tubers and anyone who specifically profits from making content about their animals to comply with Animal Welfare Act regulations, which include adequate veterinary care and species-specific standards for enclosure type, species separation, sanitation, water access, and diet. And they're claiming that a good chunk of pet tubers, specifically the ones listed previously, don't actually follow those regulations as is, revealing in their videos poor and inadequate living conditions such as inadequate enclosures and income compatible groupings, inadequate veterinary care, and improper handling of the animals for entertainment purposes. The complaint then goes to talk about Jacob Fetter, Rico Exotic, and Cat Alia in extensive detail to talk about why they're specifically listed on this complaint. Saying that Jacob Fetter shows animals dying in his care and photoshops animals dying in his thumbnails. Which, I mean, they're not wrong to be honest. It's just a continuous thing on his channel. Rico Exotic, who has deleted most of his videos, posting videos of allowing different animals to fight and interact with each other aggressively and include performances appearing to harm animals. The most I was able to find was a clip in Meet My Exotic Pets Hood Edition video where he lets a lemur and raccoon interact in what I'm guessing is the aggressive way the article details. Hey, quit touching my raccoon like that. Better not bite him hard. See, I gotta let him play around because they both boys. Roughing up, you see what I'm saying? And they lastly say that Cat Alia has been getting criticism regarding the welfare of her animals for years and that she posted a TikTok where she shows off two baby sugar gliders by taking them from their enclosure to film them and they seem distressed. This is the TikTok in question. I didn't see any comments really criticizing her and I really couldn't find anyone criticizing her online in general. Same thing goes for Rico Exotic, but again, Animal Defense Legal Fund claims that he's wiped a lot of animal content from his channel. But there's two really interesting videos criticizing Jacob Fetter and his honestly very consistent showing of dead and injured animals on YouTube and more than that. Those videos will be linked down below to show that at least these complaints for Jacob Fetter are seemingly very much warranted. Just be warned, the videos show animal death and very injured animals, so please keep that in mind if that may distress you while watching it. They don't hide anything when discussing him, as they shouldn't, but it can be a lot. Now, while not mentioned directly in this section of the article, and really only by name, there are also plenty of videos on YouTube going into Taylor Nicole Dean's animal care and show why she's being included on this list as well, which will be linked down below. Below too. The extent of the criticism regarding her goes from animal deaths and animal hoarding to improper care and inadequate enclosures, something that is seemingly a recent problem with her facing criticism for giving her bearded dragon this massive enclosure that the website says is fit for lizards, snakes, and other small arboreal animals, while bearded dragons are semi-arboreal. However, from a recent Instagram post, it seems that she's now going to be giving her green tree python the enclosure instead, or she got another four foot tall enclosure for him too. But again, that's a recent criticism of the matter. So basically from online consensus, two out of the 
four people mentioned in this formal complaint are seemingly doing what the Animal Defense Legal Fund is actually saying they're doing. Could be three out of four, but as mentioned, Rico Exotic like wiped his channel apparently. But as always, I do encourage you to look into these matters yourself and compare notes from the Animal Defense Legal Fund to what you can find online as well. The statement on this complaint ends by talking about how the federal court's several opinions issued after the case against Jeff Lowe say exhibiting animals on social media is an activity governed by the AWA, and therefore the APHIS needs to follow these decisions by requiring all individuals on social media who meet the AWA definition of exhibitor to become licensed and comply with the AWA standards. Now, this complaint is a lot to take in, and I'm not gonna lie, when I first heard it I thought, okay, this is fine and dandy, but on a serious note, as good as this may be to actually be created, you can't just make people that are gonna post pictures of their animals online have to pay in order to do that. You can't make me have to get a license for just briefly showing this little rat dog on camera. My dog's actually a paid actor for my channel, just so you know. And that's when I decided to look further into this and learn what the AWA definition of exhibitor is, which is an absolute game changer. The definition literally makes this complaint seemingly very viable. So very quickly, let's break down what the AWA defines as an exhibitor. According to the AWA, exhibitor is any person, public or private, who is exhibiting any animals, which were purchased in commerce or the intended distribution of which affects commerce, or will affect commerce to the public for compensation, as determined by the secretary exhibiting such animals, whether operated for profit or not, but such term excludes retail pet stores, any owner of a common domesticated household pet who derives less than a substantial portion of income from a non-primary source of exhibiting an animal that exclusively resides at the residence of the pet owner. So to put this in layman's terms, because that is a lot to take in. If you have an Instagram where you just post pictures of your dog and are not deriving a profit from it, you are absolutely in the clear. You heard that right, you do not need to delete your little personal dog's account where you essentially roleplay as your dog. This is specifically targeting people who post content of their animals online for compensation, whether that be profit or not. Basically, pet tubers and anyone who posts content of their animals online are going to be the ones affected by this complaint because they're making money posting content of their animals and if you need something else to add to it, it really doesn't take a genius to find comments on those channels saying that they're the reason that these people want to get the animals that they're talking about. They post animal content, they get paid for making this content, it also affects commerce, Surprise, surprise, they are seemingly exhibitors with this definition in mind. And suddenly, this very quiet form of complaint that really hasn't been discussed actually seemingly has legs to stand on. And in my honest opinion, this isn't a bad thing in the slightest, because this is only going to affect the people it really needs to affect. Getting this license should be an absolute breeze for content creators and pet tubers alike who basically already do this. If you're already taking really good care of your animal, you have nothing to worry about. It's those that don't that actually do have to worry. Because the repercussions are, if they fail to comply with the AWA, confiscation of animals, fines, cease and desist orders, or license suspensions, and if they lose their license, they can't continue their regulated activity. Now, I don't know about you, but that doesn't seem like a bad deal to me. In theory, if this was to go through, this would show that the pet tubers you're watching are actually taking adequate care of their animals. This would therefore put to rest any criticism or rumors that they are not taking care of their animals because now they have legal proof that they are. Because as mentioned, if a pet tuber is not meeting or exceeding these standards, then they cannot post content without basically breaking the law. Tell you what, this is gonna tell you really quickly who is and isn't actually taking care of their animals. Gonna be honest for a second, any pet tuber that's against this I'm a little bit sketch of because truly, what is the downside to this? Yes, this license does actually cost money and you are not going to get that money back if you do fail your inspection, which again, the inspections are basically just making sure that you're meeting the standards that they require and are actually taking care of your animals properly. But this license lasts three years and it shows that you're actually adequately taking care of your animal, with literal proof of you meeting these standards. The way I see it, it gives you credibility to basically say, hey, yes, I make animal content, and yes, my animals are very much taken care of, which, with this complaint in mind, clearly cannot be the same for some pet tubers. However, remember how I said there's a catch to this? Well, we need to get into that now. This complaint is only going to affect certain pet tubers and certain content creators in general, and not the extent that the complaint entails it to be. And in order to understand this, we need to go back to the AW and read their definition for animals. Because while this part is logistically tricky, it is a big deal. The AWA only protects certain animals by definition, and those animals being dogs, cats, primates, and other mammals. And the animals left out of this are primarily animals being bred for research like mice, rats, and birds, animals used for food or hides, invertebrates, fish, amphibians, reptiles, and overall cold-blooded animals. This is also further seen in their definition of exotic animal, which primarily focuses on other warm-blooded animals and none of the previously mentioned excluded ones. To my understanding, this 
therefore means that those who have animals that are not included in the AWA do not need to get a license. With this in mind, I believe three out of the four of the people mentioned in this have what can be classified as protected under the AWA, and the only one that doesn't necessarily is Taylor Nicole Dean, because this act excludes reptiles and that's primarily what she shows on her channel. Yeah, so this is a bit of a downside to the actual complaint at hand. And while we can all agree that per definition, all the people included in this complaint are technically exhibitors per the AWA definition, the AWA only covers certain animals and isn't as all-encompassing as his complaint makes it come across. Therefore, I believe an amendment would actually be necessary in order for this complaint to go through to the extent that it is seemingly trying to go through as. The amendment changing it so more animals are actually falling under the AWA instead of just certain ones. Because clearly pets nowadays go beyond just your typical dog and cat. My best friend is a very good example of that, which in all honesty makes it more of a mammal welfare act than a actual animal welfare act. But I digress. Now with all of this in mind, there is a few ways I can see this going. Obviously, we're either going to see this complaint not get addressed, or we are going to see it actually get addressed. There's just a couple outcomes that can come from the two of these options. If this complaint isn't addressed in the slightest, we will more than likely see more people criticize and comment on certain pet tubers and animal content creators, animal care, and overall animal welfare. And this includes the people mentioned in this complaint and even beyond that. I also believe that if this complaint isn't addressed, we are going to see further reports and more people calling out animal exploitation on social media, such as a social media animal cruelty coalitions as talked about on International Animal Rescue, which is documented to have 5,480 individual links to videos that contain subtle and probably unintentional animal cruelty to intentional animal cruelty. Basically, if this complaint isn't addressed, we're just going to see a lot more reports come out on this over time until something is actually done. And the creators discussed in these reports, if there are creators specifically mentioned, are going to face two things. The fans are either going to defend them to the death of them, or people are actually going to start criticizing them and looking a little further into these complaints. On the somewhat better hand, if the complaint is addressed, there are a couple ways this can go as well due to the, for lack of a better word, loopholes that are in the AWA. If this complaint is addressed and it actually does go somewhere, pet tubers with mammals and other animals that are only included in the AWA are going to be required to get a license. So yes, action's being taken, but not to the extent that the complaint really thinks it should go. The other option with this is that the complaint's going to get addressed and an amendment is created to include more animals than just the ones already already listed that are covered under the AWA. Meaning that instead of a portion of pet tubers and animal content creators having to get a license, actually a lot more would and it would be more encompassing. But to be honest, I find that to be rather wishful thinking because this would have to be implemented and then the complaint would have to be addressed. Or the complaint would create the amendment, but that would go on for so long. And if you guys weren't bummed out enough, let's just bum you out a little bit further. Because truly, this whole section is just a harsh, harsh dose of reality. Even if this were to go through in the most idealistic way possible, because again, I see no negative to expanding the definition of animal and requiring more pet tubers to have to get this license. There's still issues with the Animal Welfare Act due to its limitations and low standards for exhibitors and the infrequent inspections with inadequately trained inspectors that the Animal Legal Defense Fund points out themselves as well. Basically, think about how the LAPD's Animal Cruelty Task Force butchered the Brookhouse case times that by a metric fuck ton, and that's basically what you're gonna see. Because pet tube and animal content online is so massive, it's bound to just get very very messy. So even if things were to get passed, there's more than likely things that are going to slip through the cracks because the system itself is already overextended, basically making the certification still rather questionable. Kind of a bummer, because in theory this should actually bolster a pet tuber's reputation, but uh, nothing good can happen because it's 2022. We just can't have nice things around here. So in conclusion, the new problem facing pet tube is the copious amounts of reports and organizations that are going into the animal exploitation that is taking place on YouTube and other social media sites. And more recently, actually deciding to address this through a formal complaint to the USDA, which is seemingly the biggest complaint regarding pet tubers and content creators who use their animals for content due to it saying that they should be pushed to get licensed to exhibit their animals on social media while citing Jacob Fetter, Rico Exotic, Caddy Leah, and Taylor Nicole Dean as their examples as to why this should be implemented. Again, them being cited, but not being the lone individuals involved in this issue. However, this complaint is still only that, a complaint that has been filed with the court to initiate a lawsuit and 
and state what they want to be done. So for right now, we can only speculate what could come about this. Maybe action will be taken for all pet tubers, maybe only some will be affected, and maybe this complaint is going to go nowhere. But regardless, I highly doubt this is going to be the last time we hear about somebody filing a formal complaint against people who exhibit animals on social media, making this seemingly the new problem with pet tube that is more than likely here to stay. But that is going to do it for this video on the Animal Legal Defense Fund's complaint against pet tube and how this has basically become pet tube's newest problem. Again, as I mentioned, this complaint cites specific people. However, they are not the only individuals a part of pet tube. There are probably more people out there that do shit that they just didn't list. So please do not go out of your way to harass the individuals cited in this complaint. That will literally get them nowhere. As shown in the Social Media Animal Cruelty Coalition report, this is a massive issue that goes beyond a few pet tubers. So if you really want to do anything, pushing the information of this complaint is probably the best thing you can do since that'll at least raise awareness for the topic at hand. Per usual, all my research is included in the description below so you can look for yourself and come to your own conclusions regarding this. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe down below because I have more content coming your way that is going to be a little bit more laid back and also research heavy every now and then. Uh, obviously, because this was very research heavy, we need to take a little break, so next week is going to be a little bit of a brain drain video. But until then, again, all the information is in the description below if you would like to look into this yourself. If you feel compelled to, please feel free to share the complaint to bring awareness to the whole situation. And until the next video, I will see you guys later. Bye. There you go, buddy. You are a paid actor. Congratulations. I love you dearly. Good boy.